list because over 40 years ago we have been carrying instrument following him you know in the field and by the grace of God he has not departed from that passion for the gospel of the kingdom preaching the truth getting people saved and discipling men join me as I bring up God's servant my spiritual father and mentor Pastor M.K. Adaramala as a minister. Shout hallelujah. Let's have a seat. Um, let me appreciate the reverend and also congratulate him for this number of years in ministry that he has been consistent. If there's a good leader, then there should be a good follower. So I want to appreciate you for your good followership. All the men and the women of God present, I want to appreciate your coming. God bless you. May God increase you in your own ministry. All the board members, and I want to appreciate you for staying and staying with the man of God. Since I have a very short time, just to summarize what I've been saying since about three days ago, from our team, that this, this, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached throughout all the nations and I've discovered that all the invited guests have spoken about this team from various angles but the part of this team that came as a body on my heart that I brought here and not only that in the recent time that I've been sharing all over the world in the fact that sometimes we can even get it right in knowing the gospel of the kingdom because there are people that are not well informed about the gospel of the kingdom what they preach is not the gospel of the kingdom but let's even assume that we have gotten it right my problem is that the gospel of the kingdom Without the power of God, we accomplish little or nothing. And that is the problem we have currently. And I've read my Bible to discover that every uh, disciple of Christ in the Bible days that received this commission of the gospel of the kingdom there was something they sought first as a prerequisite for their success and that is power and I told the audience that even Jesus himself that came to present the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom to us that his first sermon was that the kingdom of heaven is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel but then before he started the gospel the first thing he did was to seek for the power of the spirit we all know from the bible how he went to river jordan humble himself even though he had no sin to, re to repent from but in order to submit to all righteousness he went to river jordan he was baptized and the Bible says he was praying while he was being baptized. And the heaven was open. And the Spirit of God came upon him. And the same Spirit of God led him into the wilderness for 40 days, for 40 nights. And Luke chapter 4, verse 14 says, And he returned in the power of the Spirit. Then he was ready for the ministry. When he was going, all the people was able to disciple he gave them the same charge he said don't go and preach yet 
until you have gotten this power. Don't go and start ministry. Don't open any office of a ministry. Don't act because without the power, nothing will happen. He now said to them, he said, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And the word endued means to be clothed with the power. And as they were returning from Galilee, coming to Jerusalem, they went to a place called the upper room that many of us in ministry are missing today. That we are celebrating, we are not 95% of this audience will be PFM. Um, I also am a PFM man. I was a former chairman of PFM chairman in Ondo State uh, before. That even though we are celebrating the Pentecostal day, but we have forgotten that another Pentecost can come. If there are people if we can have upper room ministry that we give out to raw power of God. So he told them, go and wait in fasting and in prayer until you are in deal with power from on high and they obey. And so the same thing is true today. So one thing I've discovered is that there is too much preaching through various our mediums radio, television every through you go to even if, if people know your WhatsApp number ah, a lot of preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching but they are not really having effect because there is no power to back it up I will read a scripture before I go and sit down let's look at Roman um, our people in the media Roman chapter 15 verses 18 and 19 Roman 15 verse 15 sorry verse 18 he said for that's Paul speaking I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by my words and deed. Not only by words, by his word and deed. Verse 19. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and ran about unto Elucrum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Paul said, by the power of the spirit he has fully preached the gospel of the kingdom so there is no way you and I can preach the gospel of the kingdom without power and the power is not limited to miracles healing alone it takes power before there can be a genuine conversion our churches are filled with those who are not really converted today because our messages lack power. People are not converted because you preach. They are converted because your message is anointed by the Spirit. Jesus said, the word that I speak, they are not just ordinary words, they are not letters. Because the letter kill it, but the Spirit giveth life. He said, the word I speak, they are spirit. And what? And I've discovered that my own is not like that yet. But that is the goal. That is where God wants us to go. So, my contribution in this conference is that Paul said the letter uh, Amen. I say amen. amen. The letter uh, kill it. Is that in your Bible like that? So the logos 
Let me allow our guests to praise the Lord. The logos of the world as you see it in your Bible this without the spirit of the, of the Lord without anointing of the spirit on it kills so many a times in our churches or we are on crusade ground or anywhere the gospel is preached without the power of the spirit it does more harm than good because the letter kill it and only the spirit give it life and so that's why Jesus he could be on the mountain throughout the whole night for a sermon of 30 minutes and so this is a lesson I have brought in this I have some people I was grooming I told them why evangelism is no longer working if, it's, if it was working in the bible days it will work in our days and the reason why it appears that it's not working is because those preaching we are just sowing empty seed that has no power I told them that can you imagine if we have fasting and prayer for the power of God to anoint our work for three weeks for an evangelism of two hours do you know what will happen it will be serious finally let me address the youth I've read the bible and I've read history church history I've discovered I've not even seen one that God used old men like myself for revival but unfortunately today it is the youth that are not ready for revival it is the youth don't forget that God wants to use the youth outside then in politics everybody is clamoring for the youth but the kind of youth that we have today they are not the youth that can lead this country to anywhere and so can't we take it up as a challenge and allow the gospel of Christ to begin to impact the youth so that we can have rest in this country so I've challenged us during my ministration throughout the time that if we that are minister that are here if we begin to disciple our youth to be instrument and vessels for revival that most of the church ministry that has nothing to do with revival that we engage them many of us have a very powerful music department protocol department auctioning department so many departments but no upper room department and you still want something to happen that's not true it can never happen they are not ready to fast without fasting nothing will happen so this is the crucial of the matter it is then that the gospel can be real gospel may god bless his word